Hello, I'm Jeremy, and this is a 5.3 liter LM7 with 260,000 miles on it. As you probably know, these manifold bolts all break off in the cylinder head, and then you have to figure out how to get them out. Now, mine only has one broken off bolt. So, what I'm going to do to make my life miserable is I'm going to cut the heads off these other bolts, which I haven't turned with a wrench yet, so they are seized in there good. And I'm going to cut the heads of the bolts off, I'm going to pull the manifold off, and then I'm going to show you how to remove all of these broken slash rusty cutoff bolts from the cylinder head. So, let's get started. So I've now just cut the heads off of all the bolts. So we have one, two, three, four, five that we've cut the head bolts off, and then this guy in the back that was already not there. So now, let's see if the manifold pops off. There it is. All right. Now a few of you may be saying, I could just grab those with vice grips. That's so easy, Jeremy. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna cut a couple of them off flush with the cylinder head, just to make it even harder. So let's keep cutting. <clears throat> These two bolts are now cut off smooth with the cylinder head and I even ground them down so that they're flush. So now we've got broken off bolt, broken off bolt, broken off bolt, cut off flush, cut off flush, and then broken off bolt. So now let's get to actually removing some of these things. I think I'm gonna start with just a pair of vice grips on this end and see if we can pull one out. So, We'll get the vice grips on. Now you wanna have vice grips with some teeth left. If, you've, if you use these uh, vice grips for a while, you wear off the teeth and then you don't have any grip. So we're gonna make sure we get a pair with some grip. <sighs> okay. So those things are clamped on there good. Now, oh wow, this is gonna be easy. Okay, so this one's gonna pop right out. So if you happen to have a stud sticking out, some vice grips might just work. All right, so the first option of vice grips, total success. So the next one is obviously a broken off stud. And what we're gonna do is we're going to double nut it. So you put on one nut and then you put on another one right behind it. And then if you turn the first one that's closest to the head, it will actually get tight and it will pull the stud out. Now this is an eight by 1.25 thread pitch. So what I'm gonna do, um, since the end of this stud is kind of mangled a little bit from me cutting it off, I'm gonna throw a die on it and we're gonna clean up the threads and then we're gonna put two nuts on it. So let's get started. Squeaky, 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 squeaky. So we've now cleaned up the threads so they look really good. And now I'm going to throw two nuts on here. So I'm going to put the first one on and kind of snug it up a little bit. All right, so it's on there good. Now we're going to put the second one on. We'll tighten that one up. Okay, so now you're gonna need two wrenches. In this case, I'm using two half inch wrenches because I got nuts that are half inch. So I'm gonna put them on here. I'm gonna turn them both at the same time. Hopefully have this thing come loose. You wanna tighten them up against each other first, like that. Okay, so now hopefully it cracks loose. Nope, nothing so far. Tighten them up a little bit more. When in doubt, I like to add fire.
Well, at least you know this is a real video, right? Because if it worked perfectly the first time, you'd probably know I was faking it. I may have moved. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay. So, I could see that the center of the bolt moved right there. It does take a little trial and error to get it perfect, but it looks like it's gonna come out now. It sure is tight though. This is probably super hot, let's see. Nope, I can still hold it, so it's not that hot. All right, so you can see that this came out. So we're now done with two different methods. Both were successful. Let's move on to the third. Next on the list, we're gonna pull this stud out by welding a nut to it. Now you can use pretty much any size nut you want, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a nut over it, we're gonna weld the nut to the stud, and then we're going to twist the nut and hopefully the stud will come out. Now, one thing to note on this is if you are welding this while the engine is still in the car, unlike me, um, make sure you disconnect your battery because if you're welding stuff uh, to a car with the battery plugged in, you risk burning up uh, the computer, the modules, things like that. So make sure you unplug your battery and use, of course, all the safety precautions if you're gonna be doing any welding and let's weld this thing up. So one thing we wanna do is we wanna use lots of heat and probably lower wire speed. Now I'm just gonna use a MIG welder that I have, but you can use a TIG welder, you can use a stick welder. You can pretty much use any kind of welder you want. So we're gonna go ahead and weld this puppy up. All right, I couldn't have welded it more crooked, but we're gonna try and get it off anyways. All right, so let's spin that nut. Now, rather than grabbing this with my fingers like the last one, I'm gonna grab it with the vice grip so I don't burn the hell out of myself. All right, we've done it. We've pulled three of the six studs out. That's pretty good. All right, let's move on to the hard ones. So these are getting harder now. We've got the next two are cut even with the head. So sometimes your bolt breaks off either even with the head or even slightly below the head surface. And that makes it pretty challenging, but I'm gonna show you what to do. So actually, before I show you that, some people will just take a, a nut and they will put it on here and they will weld right down the center of the nut. But I find that a little more challenging. So what I like to do is I take a washer and I weld the stud to the washer and then I weld the nut to the washer. So that's what we're gonna do right now. Let's weld up the broken off stud to the washer and see how far that gets us. Okay, so now let's see if it will spin. It's probably gonna break off. Let's see. Oh my goodness, I think my, held, my weld is holding. As sketchy as this looks, I think we're, I think we're gonna be successful. All right, sweet success. I'm actually very surprised that that held but you can see that this actually works pretty well. You just gotta weld the washer to the stud and then the nut to the washer. Doesn't matter how ugly it looks. This is not a showpiece, but we got the stud out. So now let's do the worst one of all. 
So my most hated way of removing broken bolts is by far using a drill bit and extractors. For me, it works like less than 50% of the time. What usually happens is I drill the hole, I pop this in, and sometimes I'll break this off. Sometimes it'll just strip out and it won't come out. So it ends up being a fight. So using the welding method or the vice grips or something like that has a way higher success rate for me at least. But I'm gonna show you how to do this and we're gonna hope like heck it works. So what we've got is a drill bit and an extractor. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drill right down the center of this bolt. Then we're gonna slam the extractor in there and we're gonna try and pull this broken stud out with the extractor. So let's get this started. So the first step is to center punch the stud so that when I drill, the drill bit doesn't wander all over the place. So we're gonna try and get this in the center as close as we can. Maybe right here. So now I've got this dot in the center. That's exactly where I'm gonna drill. Let's start drilling. It never hurts to put a little lube on it. Now you do have to make sure you don't drill in too deep. If you drill in too deep, you're gonna drill into the head, of course. And that would be bad. So what you can do is if you have another bolt out, you can put the drill bit in and see how far it goes in. And that way you know, you know, you can drill about that far in. Why don't we measure it and see how deep it is? Holding this against a tape measure, looks like it's mm, three quarters of an inch would be safe. It looks like it might be slightly more than that. Let's check some other ones. Yeah, they appear to all be the same depth. And it looks like it's just a hair over three quarters of an inch. But I'd say three quarters is where I'm definitely gonna stop if I even get that far. I'm just gonna give this a little tap. And now, let's see if it wants to turn. be a no-go on that one. All right, gonna drill some more. All right, we're gonna pop this bugger right back in there. Give a little tap. See if it wants to come out now. You're gonna be shocked by this, but these things are not working for me. All right, so I guess what I'm gonna do now is drill a slightly bigger hole, and then we're gonna try and collapse the bolt in on itself, which I'll show you in just a minute. Okay, so we've now drilled pretty much all the way through the bolt, and I'm gonna try and just collapse the bolt in on itself. As you can see, that works pretty well. Once you've drilled out pretty much the whole center of the bolt, you can usually just collapse them. And then sometimes you can pull them out with like needle nose pliers or vice grips or something like that. It's a pretty miserable process. Now here we go. I don't know if you just saw it, but the bolt just turned. Just 
just switching punches so that I can maybe turn this a little better. One thing that I, I don't know if I actually mentioned it, but once you collapse the bolt in on itself, then you're trying to basically spin it out until you can grab it with some pliers or some vice grips. I think we may be able to grab it with some pliers now. Maybe. Okay. So there we have it. It is now out, but what you can see is that I didn't drill very straight, which means I probably screwed up some of the threads that are in this bolt hole. So I think what I'll do is I'll run the tap down there and make sure all the threads are uh, at least mostly back where they were. And if you just have one bolt that's like this, where the threads aren't perfect, you're probably probably gonna be all right. But I mean, if you do this to every single one of your your studs, you may need to drill it out and put like a, a thread cert in there um, so that you actually have some good threads to attach to. So I'm going to run the tap through there and take a look inside there and see how bad it is. And yeah, well, we got this one out. We only got one left. That's pretty good. We're just going to take an 8 by one25 tap and throw it right in here. I'm just going to run it in really quick. Make sure all the threads are still there. I'm sure they are. And I'll probably blow it out with a uh, air hose as well, just to make sure it's all good. Yeah, it feels fine. I'm sure the threads aren't perfect, but it's a heck of a lot better than having a broken bolt in there, am I right? All right, now the last bolt right here, this is the one that was originally broken off that I didn't even cut off. So this one's probably stuck in here pretty good. And I think the best way to get that out is to go ahead and weld a turbocharger to it. I think I'm just gonna weld it straight to the bolt. And then if I spin the turbocharger, the bolt should come out. So let's get started on that, see what happens. Now that we have the turbocharger welded to the exhaust manifold stud that's broken off, we are going to go ahead and spin it. Actually, it looks like it's spinning pretty easily to remove the exhaust manifold bolt, which is snapped off, now welded to a turbocharger, a fine turbocharger. So it looks like welding a turbocharger to a broken exhaust manifold bolt is actually a very effective solution to the problem. We're gonna go ahead and keep spinning though, just to make sure it comes all the way out. Okay, there we have it. So it looks like attaching a turbocharger to a broken exhaust manifold bolt is actually a perfectly good solution to removing the bolt. All right, now that we've got all of them out, I think it's probably a good idea to do a quick recap of where we're at. So the first option was using vice grips, and that method works pretty well. I don't know why this bolt was so loose. Maybe some of yours are as well. So hopefully you can grab yours with vice grips and just spin them right out. The second option was double nutting it. Now this works if you have some of the broken bolts sticking out of the head. And sometimes you do need to use a torch to also loosen up the bolt, as we did in the video. But the method does work. Next, welding a nut to the broken off bolt. Now this works pretty well, but you do need to have a welder, first of all. 
and you need to have pretty good aim to get the welding, um, the filler down the center of the nut. If you don't get it down the center of the nut and you don't get good penetration into the broken off exhaust manifold bolt, it's probably gonna just snap off the nut. Now, when I was actually doing this in a Silverado not too long ago, it probably took me three tries to do that. Um, I broke off like two or three of the nuts that I welded on because I just couldn't get a good penetration of the actual uh, broken off bolt. So what I ended up doing was doing this method. And this method actually works fantastic. If you weld a washer to the broken off bolt and then you weld a nut to the washer, it just works nearly 100% of the time. This is pretty much the method that I go to every time now. So I highly recommend this. Obviously you need a welder to do it, but you can use a stick welder, you can use a MIG welder or a, or a TIG welder, whatever welder you have, you can probably successfully do this with. Um, and welders have actually come down in price quite a bit over the last 10 years. So although, you know, 10 years ago, you might've spent $1,000 on a welder, you can get a cheap one for like 200 bucks now. So certainly if you don't have a welder, it's a great thing to have. It's really helpful when you're dealing with broken off parts. So the second to last option was drilling it. Now this is my most hated method. I only do this when everything else fails or if I don't have welding gas or something like that. This is my absolute last resort. I hate it. Um, I tried using the easy out, which almost never works for me. I think easy outs probably do work if you're putting a bolt in and you snap the head off by accident, probably a smaller bolt then I think it would come back out again. But when you're dealing with stuff that's been in an engine for 260,000 miles, there's just no chance of an easy out working, um, at least in my experience. So anyways, this is my least favorite. It does work, but I wouldn't recommend it to a friend. And last, we have the turbocharger method. Now this method works fantastic if you have some old turbochargers to weld to your engine. I don't know if this is the best method. Maybe it's not, maybe it is, I don't know. But if you got the old turbocharger hanging around, certainly give it a try. And if you have other methods of removing bolts from engines or you know broken off situations, certainly leave them in the comments because I wanna hear about it. I need to learn just like you do. So leave me a comment, be sure to subscribe to the video and maybe even share it with a friend or two. And uh, hopefully I'll see you on the next one.